This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hi everyone, Mike Hoffman here with a tip on using history in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. In fact, this is a double tip because we're going to cover using snapshots as well. And as we'll see, history and snapshots work very nicely together. Here we're looking at an image and we're in the develop module. If we look at the before and after comparison by pressing the letter Y or by clicking this icon in the lower toolbar, we can see that I've made quite a few changes to this image from the way it looked when I imported it. I'll press the letter D to return to the develop module with this single image. And let's look at the panel over here on the left side of the interface. This is where we'll find the history panel. And if we expand this, you'll see a complete list of all the changes I've made to this image since importing it. You've heard that Lightroom is a non-destructive editor, and this is where we get to the heart of it. All the edits we've ever made are recorded as a list of modifications, even the adjustment brush or spot removal edits. The history panel gives us access to the entire linear chain of events that result in the final image that you see here. Now we can undo changes with Control Z or Command Z on a Mac, and that's useful for quick undo commands while we're editing. But undo is a session level command, and it includes everything that you do, including module changes, moving between images, and so forth. So if I wanted to step back through this history, I could only do that if these were the last things I did in Lightroom. If I made these changes last week or last month, undo is not going to help me here. Fortunately, moving backwards in the edit history is as simple as clicking the history states here in the history panel. Clicking on any history state returns the image to that state. And we can go all the way back to the beginning to the imported image. As soon as I click on a state, it becomes the active state. And I don't have to go through one at a time. So I can click on any one at random in this entire list. And I can step forward too. Because moving to any state leaves all the other states in the list. So we can click and choose wherever we want in this list. Now here's the catch. If we move to an earlier state, such as this one, and make an adjustment, let's say I bump the exposure just a little bit, as soon as I do that, I've lost all the other history states that come after that, and I can't get back to them. So let's look at a workaround for that. Now in order to move forward, this is one place where undo can help us. Pressing Control Z or Command Z on a Mac will get us back to the state we were in before we lost our history. But now, here's a way to save the history state. And we'll click on the last one here to make sure that we're viewing the final state. And we're going to save this state while allowing other changes to be made. Let's suppose that I wanted to try some different edit treatments to this image, starting from this point or starting from any point, And I want to make sure I can get back to here if I don't like what I've done. Now I could create a virtual copy and work on the copy. But here, right above the history panel, is the snapshot panel. And this will help us a lot. By clicking the plus sign here, we can create a snapshot of the state of the image as it exists right now. We can give it a name, and I'll call it Edgy Color. We'll click on Create, and we can see it appear here in the Snapshots panel. At this point now, we can go back, way back in the History panel, to right after the spot removal, and we can make some other changes. We'll make a completely different set of edits. And we'll make it drastic so that you can see what we've done here. So that is quite a bit different. And notice that as soon as we started making these changes, we lost all the subsequent history. However, let's take another snapshot right here. And we'll call this Soft Saturated. And we'll click Create. At this point, we can click on the first snapshot, Edgy Color. And we can get right back to there. And notice that all the sliders are returned to their initial position. We still don't have the history that we had leading up to the edgy color state, 
but every single setting and every single adjustment, including the spot healing and the adjustment brush edits are all maintained. This is similar in some ways to a develop preset, but it does include a little more information than a typical preset. So we can quickly switch between snapshots and notice another thing, as we switch between snapshots, we're not overwriting the history. We're actually adding new history states with those snapshots recorded as a history step. Now here's a bonus tip. What if we want to see a before and after showing the two snapshots? If we press the backslash to get the before image, that's the imported state. Or if we click the before and after icon down here, once again, we get a comparison to the imported state. We'll press D to go back to the develop module. But now what we can do is move over to the snapshots panel and right click on edgy color and we can copy the snapshot settings to before. So now when we bring up the before and after, we're comparing the two snapshots rather than the original imported unedited photo. Now we'll press the D key to go back to the develop module and let's say that we liked this effect but we wanted to add just one more thing to it. For example, maybe we wanted to go down here into the effects panel and add a bunch of grain. At this point, we've gone past our snapshot, but we can go to this snapshot here in the snapshots panel and right click on it and choose update with current settings. And it is just like that. Now here's one more thing. We talked about virtual copies as an alternative workaround to making different sets of edits to a single image and virtual copies are very useful. I use them all the time. But when you create a virtual copy, the history states are reset. Let's create a virtual copy of this image by simply right clicking and choosing create virtual copy. Sure enough, the history state is completely reset and there's only a single state, create virtual copy and the date. However, take a look at the snapshots panel. The snapshots are carried over with their full settings and we can still get back to the edgy color snapshot that we had in the original master image, including all the spot healing, graduated filter and adjustment brush effects. This is extremely useful. History is a powerful tool, but as we've seen, it's easy to wipe out our history and lose it. Taking snapshots periodically in your edit process adds almost nothing to the file size, but it will allow you to get back to your save state at any time. Use the two tools together for a flexible and versatile workflow. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of information there related to photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.